Hi everybody, um, I'm Jacqueline. Thank you for coming along today. It's really lovely to be here. Um, I'd like to thank the Watkins Book team also for this wonderful opportunity. I feel incredibly grateful and blessed to be here speaking um, to you tonight about my book, What the Fuck is Happening with My Life. Now I do have a disclaimer, I am going to curse. This is the G-rated version, the WTF. Um, I'm sure many of you have had many moments of going, what the fuck? But before I jump into talking about the book, um, actually, before I, can everybody hear me okay? Because I tend to speak a little bit quietly. Um, before I jump into talking about the book, how the purpose, where it's the origins, um, how it'll help you, what I'd like to do is ask you a few questions just for you to think about. So you don't have to answer, but I'm a big fan of some self-reflection because what happens is we lead very busy lives um, and we often fail to take the time just to check in with ourselves and to see where we're at in life. So I'll ask you. Think about your current life right now. And what does it look like? How are things functioning? How happy are you? What are your relationships like with other people in your life, whether it's friends, family, work colleagues, even strangers? How much do you love yourself? And how many issues, or what I'm going to use under the guise of going with the theme of the book is what I like to call, how much shit is happening in your life at the moment? Now, if someone had have asked me that question, or those questions, 10 years ago, I would have been the one discreetly slipping out the door there because I would have completely run and, and, and failed to answer that. But for those of you who have resonated with any of those, questions or have identified an area of your life or parts of yourself that could be better or could be improved, then there's good news because this book will hopefully help you. Now as an author, um, people have often said to me, why did, why did you write a book and why, why would you write a self-help book? Now if anybody had ever said to me that my first book would be a self-help book, based on the fact that I had a dysfunctional life for probably about 25 years, I would never ever have believed it. And for me, after about, as I said, 25 years of bitching and whinging and moaning and complaining about my life and blaming everybody else in the world for my problems, I finally woke up and I realised that the reason my life was abysmal the reason I kept going through head fuck after head fuck of a situation was because I was the problem. It had nothing to do with anybody else. It was me. My life was a direct reflection of who I was and what I had created, both consciously, unconsciously, and from a higher self perspective. And when I worked out this answer, because it's so very simple, it was one of those moments where I'm like, oh, Seriously, what the fuck? But I, it had changed my life. And I was so passionate ab about that. that I said to myself, if I can help one person shift their perspective, own their shit, work through it, be empowered and change their life, then that for me was mission accomplished. And so this book was born. So what did I learn? Well, after years and years of peeling back layer after layer, unconditioning myself to condition teachings and learnings, there were a number of things which stood out to me. Three things in particular, however, which I want to share. The first thing is that life actually becomes more meaningful in so much as a sense that you realize that there's purpose behind everything that the reason you're going through adversities challenges whatever it might be is designed for you the second thing is life actually becomes much easier. 
you stop struggling. The strength and the resilience that you develop when you've spent years working on yourself, you know, you've sorted out everything, or most things, you find that your level of resilience in who you are is at a peak. So therefore, anything that life throws at you, you can handle. It becomes easier. You're in the flow. And the other thing was that you can actually become more in control. Now, admittingly, we don't have crystal balls and we can't always negotiate the terms and conditions with the universe on what we want and when. But going back to the flow, there's less resistance. Things happen easy and things happen naturally for you. So the book itself runs through a number of themes and each chapter explores different themes and these are quite universal. We've got childhood, parenting, mental health, uh, dating and relationships, social expectations, ideals, so the societal pressures that we hit that we often get put into a box to conform to, uh, and social media. So they are universal concepts. And I'll give you, I'll give you an example um, of one of the, the chapters here so that you can get a little bit of an idea of what, what it covers. So chapter two speaks of family, something that we can all resonate with and relate to. And it's titled, hashtag family, a sometimes unfortunate situation. I think the title says it all. Now, I start off this chapter with a quote, family, the other F word. Mm -hmm. And as I said, it's, it's, a, it's something that we can all resonate with. We all have family. For some of us, Family is the absolute lifeblood. You know, you see the beautiful relationships that people have. For some of us, however, family dynamics are appalling. And having to speak to, interact with family as, an, as it can be and as appealing as listening to nails on a chalkboard. And I fell into that latter category. For me, I grew up in a family where I got sick of asking, who the fuck are these people? <laughs> Am I, I can't be related. I love my family, bless them. Um, but when you grow up in an environment as a child where you don't feel loved and you don't feel accepted, you're constantly feeling like the black sheep, then what happens is by default, it plants some seeds and can manifest into some deep-rooted issues which transpire into other areas of your life. So for me, not knowing how to love myself, not feeling loved, not feeling accepted, manifested into my life. 12 years of age, I end up with an eating disorder, right? Because I don't know how to love myself, I don't know how to nourish and care for myself. So for about 12, 13 years, I battle with that on and off. Come to the age of 15, moving into 17, because I hadn't learned the lesson of how to love myself early on at that age of 12, I get another test, and that is I end up with depression. Moving forward a few extra years, I get to the point again of not knowing how to love myself, avoiding the issue, because I tried everything I could at that time to deal with the mental health issues. But what I'd failed to do was give myself permission to change. Now, before I go on, there is a quote that I like, and it's, and it's, very, it's very simple, and you've probably heard it before. I use it, again, use it a lot. I like to use it under the guise of this book and running with the theme, and that is, I'll often tell people, go and sort your shit out. You often, you probably know people in your life that they come in, that they bitch and moan and they complain about the same thing over and over and over again. You give them advice and they do nothing about it. So, the quote is, for things to change, you have to change. Right? For things to change, you have to change. It's not a new concept. Einstein touched on it back in the 1800s, definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over 
again and expecting a different result. Well, if your life's fucking miserable and shit's happening and it's out of control and you do nothing about it, then I guarantee you it will continue to stay that way. So you have to change. So for me, back in this period of my life, I couldn't, I didn't want to change. I didn't know how to change. So the manifestation of the absence of self-love and respect continued to transpire into areas of my life. 21, I try to kill myself. I enter an abusive relationship. Again, the failure to recognize that from a very early age, I could have simply learnt the lesson of what I was being taught. And rather than avoid it and deal with it in the first instance, then I often wonder if my life would have been different. So I ask you to reflect on your life and where it is now and look and go, okay, so is there something happening right now that's been there for two years, five years, ten years? that might need addressing, need to change. Because if you don't address it, it will continue to manifest in your life until you do. And it's not too late. So what I do is, is in the book is again, I, I discuss the, going back to the family concept, I've gone off on a tangent there, but looking at family, for those dynamics or for, that are difficult and for those of us who are in families where we feel like the oddball or we just don't get along, then the chapter discusses the dynamics and how we can actually move through that. And it's through acceptance, simple acceptance, that not, we're not just here for a purpose, but our family are here too. We've chosen them to help, help us on our journey. They're teaching us. And I often step back and go, okay, so what are they teaching me? Patience? for a start, <laughs> which is the most common one. But when you, when you have that ability to go, okay, we're here for a reason and purpose, take the higher perspective, and just reflect and go, okay, let's see what I'm teaching them too. What are they teaching me? Then you find that your ability to deal with people and situations really starts to improve absence of self-love and how our mental health issues and things that we don't address do transpire into other areas of the life. Chapter four looks at dating and relationships. We've all been there. Um, you know, looking at putting the spotlight on, again, that absence of self-love and self-respect and trying to examine, again, the dynamics and what's actually going on in unhealthy relationships. So, so can I ask, is there, any, is there anybody that, that feels like they're in a position where they can start making some improvements on their life? You don't have to, you don't have to put your hand up. <laughs> I'm not singling anybody out. I'm just wanting you to, to think, I guess. Yeah. Okay, good. So I guess from, from being here today um, and from reading this book, what I, I want to, to do is, is I'm hoping that, that you'll take away a, a few things. And that is, first of all, is um, I'd like you to be exposed to a new philosophy on life. Because the way the book is written is, well, I'll describe the book, it's, it's in three elements. It's written from a, um, a spiritual base. And, and I understand and appreciate that the concept of spirituality might be a little unfamiliar to some or it still comes with those connotations around new age hippies and gypsies and singing kumbaya and what have you but that's not what I'm talking about when I'm referring to spirituality what I'm referring to is looking at life essentially from a higher perspective and that is that we're here for reason and purpose we are souls that incarnate here in our physical body for our own unique journeys and everything we go through in life, good and bad, the interactions we have with people in our lives, situations, events, they're all designed for you, by you, by your higher self. Because we're here to learn, we're students. So the situations that we're in, we'll play student or we'll play teacher. 
The other elements, is, as I said before, we, we go through, it's that each chapter looks in at a different theme and it uses my story as an anecdote, I guess, to demonstrate in times of adversity in particular because my life hasn't been rose-coloured. Um, I wouldn't change it other than saying, oh, I wonder, you know, the, the wonder of the what if, wouldn't it be nice aspect of if things might have been a little bit different. But in looking at my story, I, I do it as a way to show you that in any event, in any situation, there's always some purpose and meaning behind it. In every adversity, there is some good, yeah? There are always some good. And the other component of the book is obviously the, the how-to or the, the self-help exercises which I put in here. Now, I appreciate that not everybody learns the same way. Um, what, I, what works for, for you might not work for you, and that's okay. But I, I put in the exercises that did work for me, but I also make reference to a number of other exercises that may work for you. And I do believe that they will work. So, again, going back to, to being here tonight, to, to listening to me have a speak about my book, and, and if you do take a copy of the book with you, what I want you to take away is the exposure to the new philosophy on life which I've mentioned, and that being the spiritual. Because when you start look, viewing life from a higher perspective, your life starts to change. Your interactions with people start to change. And you start flowing through life from a higher level, one of love and one of acceptance. The second thing as I'd love you to do is if you do need to get your shit together, please do it. <laughs> and my, my a, a strong piece of advice I'd say to you, as I'd mentioned, touched on earlier, is if there are things in your life that need fixing or resolving or could be better, then don't wait. Because as I said, if things will continue to manifest face up to it. Because I can guarantee that, that the, the power and the strength and resilience that you start creating in yourself and who you are, you elevate yourself. And things that life throw at you, challenges or not, you can tackle. And you would start embracing, start embracing life. I'd love for you to be able to incorporate more reflection or self-reflection into your life. And it doesn't have to be a huge, a huge, take five, ten seconds every day just to check in with yourself. How am I feeling? Is everything okay? Are there some areas of my life which oh, really should be starting to work on? Put it on the to-do list. And I guess um, finally is to feel empowered or know that you've got the ability to feel empowered by acknowledging and accepting that your life is for your, your own unique journey and it has been designed for you by you and that you have choice about how you want to navigate it. Struggle or not, you have the power to change. So that's everything from me. Does anybody have any questions? I guess we're looking at um, I guess what type of changes you, you want to be making. Um, if it's I mean I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm looking at it from a not from not from a material point of view. I mean if I guess it, it, it does make it difficult when you are constrained financially but um, I don't know I think if you if you bring it back to you know are you happy? Are you healthy? Um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah I know uh, from I, I know you know money money it, you, we are constrained financially in some respects but money certainly does not solve a happiness and it certainly doesn't resolve the issues that we have everything everything is comes from in here in here yeah the journey of um, sorting my shit out um, <laughs> I tried everything. I, I did have therapy, um, counselling therapy, hypnotherapy. I did a lot of my own self-help, so reading a lot of self-help. Really engaging myself in spiritual literature was probably the, the, really, um, the real turning point for me and, and learning more about um, the spiritual components and, and again, our, our reason and purpose for being here. Um, and that, that real, you, want, you need to give yourself permission to change and you, and you need to be wanting to make the changes because when you start doing the work on yourself, you start noticing the results immediately. You really do. 
you really do. So yeah, so I've spent a lot of time doing a lot of work. And you know what, the journey, the journey of self-development is ongoing. So it doesn't stop. So you don't get to a point and go, okay, everything's done. It's, it's ongoing. We're here to learn indefinitely. So the more improvements you make on a, on a daily basis to who you are, you start reflecting that through life. So life, for me, just keeps elevating. Yeah. And that's what I've heard is that there's always room for improvement. Absolutely, and absolutely every, room yeah, for improvement. Yeah. Like, in going back to the spiritual as well, is, is it's, it's about accepting responsibility, which is, I think, the really key part in being able to make the changes that you need to and to stop playing victim. Because mm -hmm. I played victim for a really long time. And you can't play victim. You can't. The, the, the things ha things happen in your life for a reason, and and when you you, sh you step back and go, oh okay, so my life's actually set up by design because I actually, from a higher self, designed it for me because these are the things that I'm supposed to be learning in this lifetime, and if I don't learn the lesson, I'll either continue to suffer in this lifetime or I have to come back and do it all again, and you don't want to have to come back and do it all again. You want to learn what you can and grow with what you with uh, with as much as you can before you leave it and come back into it. So, you, so you're wanting to continue to evolve um, ongoing. So for me, it was really about acknowledging that I am responsible for my life. And, and I think when you operate from that level, it makes it much easier to navigate through life. And you start, as I said before, you start living life through a place of acceptance. There's, there's no judgment. You stop playing victim. You stop bitching and whinging. I mean, shit's always going to happen, yeah? We're always going to be subject to, to adversity or challenge or whatever it might be. But when you, when you, it's your attitude and your perspective on, on being able to deal with that, that makes it all the better. And ultimately, trusting, and it's really hard because I'm, I'm a reformed perfectionist and a reformed control freak, so when you have to throw it all away and go, you know what, I'm just going to trust, trust that things are happening because they're supposed to, yeah, the universe my higher self, it's all planned for me and just going with it. But knowing and trusting yourself, you can actually get through it. Because as I said, with the work that you do on yourself, it's you develop that strength and resilience. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Absolutely, to, to actually acting on it. Yeah, yeah, so for me, meditation was something that was suggested um, to me really early on in, in my therapy um, and even when I started getting involved from from the spiritual aspect and I found it really hard to meditate because my head was so full of chatter I, I actually couldn't do it I remember buying books on meditate learn how to meditate and I'd sit there and for five minutes I'm like I can't I actually can't do this it takes practice it really does it really does and it's it's a concerted effort so you really have to get into the practice of doing it and what I found really helpful is starting with the guided meditations yeah, that's what I'm because yeah. they, they kind of distract your thinking from thinking about other self and you have to focus on the meditation. Um, and then I'd start at uh, what I'd actually done for myself was actually create my own my own space in, in meditating, which I would go into. So my own little, my quiet space, which was set up, you know, there's a lake, there's a tree. So I could, it was like a retreat for me. So I know that in times when, I, you know, and I, but I'd make it a daily, a daily thing, five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. And then you start, um, I guess, increasing that a little bit. Um, it is, it does take practice. And I'll say is, is hang in there and stick with it. The thing too is about, trying to create balance and it's really difficult I mean I know what it is I have a, I have a job as well and it's that uh, trying to find the fine line or the balance between the million of millions of priorities that we're all facing um, it is really hard but it's for me it's, it's making a conscious choice and you have to and self-care for me is a must and you have to put yourself for first so when you're looking at priorities in life and the stresses that are coming in start prioritizing them and, my, and I had a friend say to me um, you know, I was complaining about work uh, 12 months ago, and he'd made a, 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 a he'd said something to me, which I went, oh, you know what, it actually makes sense. Your priorities are not my priorities. Like, your emergencies are not my priorities. So if you go back and go, oh, okay, so that makes sense. Yes, we need to get things done. But somebody else's emergencies or the shit that's happening, don't let it become yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because we have, we have choice to actually step back and go, well, you know what, you've got to look after yourself, and that's self-care is so important. So for me, I'm really conscious of balance because I know that 
the, the minute I take on too much or I go out of balance, I, I, I can potentially revert back to that anxiety and the overthinking. Yeah. So it is about being in control and going, okay, and not, and not feeling guilty about taking time out for yourself. So actually scheduling time into your, your, your schedule, your, you know, your timetable, whatever, every week to go, okay, this is, this is my self-care time, whether it be 30 minutes a week. This is where I'm going to sit and I'm going to meditate. I'm going to go to the park or go to the movies or do whatever it is because that's so crucial for you um, so you can actually have that time. Yeah, does that make does that yeah, make sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But but do put do prioritise yourself. Yeah. Do. <laughs> and don't feel guilty about it. <laughs> and say no. Learn to say no. That's a really big thing as well. It's, it's very hard. It's very hard to do. But when you learn to say no and be and be strong. No. There's nothing wrong with saying no. Not when you've got to look after your own best interests as well. Yeah. That, that comes back again to the mind the mindfulness, because we do we do get, tend to get caught up. Um, in our in our own heads, um, and things that you write, things do become automatic. But what I, I mean, what I suggest, or what I'd like to do, you know, suggest that you can do, is actually, it, it depends if you're if you're reacting quickly. And I know, look, people, there are people that come into your life, and even even for me, there'll some there'll be some people that come in and they might say something or do something, and it will trigger something. But it's, it's how you control that. And you can either take the breath and go, okay, this person might be, you know, abusive or um, having a bad day. Or it's not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of the other person. So you can choose how you respond. So I'd just say take a moment. And coming back to that acceptance and patience, and, and what I like to do is go, okay. So I might feel, I start to feel frustrated by being around a person or they might have triggered um, some sadness or some anger. But I've got to check in with myself and go, okay, so what's this person, what's, identify the emotion that they're triggering and why? Okay, so what is this about me that I still have to work on in myself? So, it, 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 and it could be anything, it could be anything. So, I, I, I guess, guess with it, I don't know if I've answered your question, but I guess maybe taking a few moments before you respond to somebody, yeah, just easy, that easy oh no it is easy said it, it is it is it's it's, it's easy said than done but yeah, it's yeah. i think i think it does come back to to the mindfulness of being in being in the present um and just checking in with yourself because if you're more if you're grounded you don't tend to react out of kilter your reactions are uh, i guess a little bit more chosen they're not that automatic so it is about making sure you're grounding yourself and, and being present and that all it takes work it takes it's a meditation it's you know, I mean, I work a lot with um, with energy, Reiki, with um, crystals as well, which I find really helpful because of the, the in, how they interact with the energy fields in the body. Um, so if you developed your own little practices that you can do to incorporate into your routine that continue to keep you grounded and just present and that absence of stress and anxiety, it helps you move through life more calmly. So therefore your reactions to people aren't going to be, you know, on the spot. You'll actually have that time to go, okay, choose how to, how do I, I can choose how I respond to this. So people who were in my life, um, whether I had any support, whether they were, were fueling that, that behaviour. So so I found, um, you know, being um, with my eating disorder um, on and off, that was that was kind of something that I, that I battled on and off with, so it wasn't necessarily, um, it was part of my, it was part of my daily life, so it was, it wasn't really, um, I guess, influenced by, by, by anybody in, in particular. Um, I didn't have the support that I needed to from very early on, which was one of the reasons I, I found it was difficult to, not only because I wasn't ready to accept it, but because I, I didn't have the support from family and friends when I was that young age, it was kind of let continue to grow. Um, even coming into the depression period, there was the absence of support for me, for, for family, so I kind of had to try to tackle everything on my own and, and deal with it, and it's a really... It was really something for me that um, it was kind of like a, a silent, a silent issue because you kind of try and just, you know, but being a teenager too, with, you know, the emotions and things that you're going through, you don't, you don't really know how to, 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 to cope with it. You don't have the coping mechanisms that you would as an adult, and because um, I guess friends and family and, and being a little, a little while ago, mental health was still kind of a kind of like a closed subject it's not as, as prominent it's not as, su as supported we don't have the support we have the support now but, but probably back then it, it, there wasn't that much available 
But when I found that uh, that I was in that period um, where I was really low, certainly in my dating and relationships, absolutely. I spent a lot of time with a lot of men, dating a lot of men that reinforced those negative self-beliefs I had about myself, that I was not worthy of love, that I was, you know, not worthy of respect, that I was worthless because they were, they were, they were, they were what I thought about myself. So I attract like for like and that's, that's something that, you know, I'm really conscious of, of now is you tend to attra- you attract people into your life for, for reason and purpose but you also attract a reflection of yourself as well. So people might be coming into your life to teach you what you need, but if you're at a really low point and you feel you hate yourself and you loathe yourself, you're just going to keep attracting people that are going to continue to reinforce those negative beliefs that you have about yourself. So for me, I spent a lot of time dating men, um, which, is, which is part of the reason why I went into a relationship with domestic violence. I mean, that's way down. That's, that's you know, when you, I lost complete and utter self-respect for myself to, to, to allow that. So... But coming back, I, I look at that person and go, what a fantastic teacher he was. What a fantastic teacher he was. Because he taught me that I had to love myself because I could not put up with this. I couldn't do it. And that was the low point for me. Now in my life, I'm blessed to, have, to be surrounded with great support, friends, family. But the people who have in my life, uh, uh, they're wonderful people um, and, and I find that as I go through life I, I, you tend to attract abundance with, with people yeah, you'll get the odd person pop in that goes you know a little bit of a test and I like to I'll have an odd you know the odd person every now and then pop into my life and I, I, I laugh to myself because I'm like yep good try you know <laughs> I'll learn the lesson or I'll disconnect from that person and move on so you're always going to be have those little tests thrown thrown at you but it's um, but it's, it's being able to recognise that and kind of play with it and have fun with it because life you know becomes life is supposed to be meaningful and full of joy and, and happiness it's not we're actually not here to struggle um we're, we're not yes we're gonna have fa- you're gonna face challenges and and shit's gonna happen but we're not we're not here we're not here for that we're here to to learn and grow and, and be abundant um and operate from a place of love so does that answer your question yeah yeah if you're wanting to get a, grab a copy of the book, please feel free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Jennifer, um, is there a way to sit and uh, connect in with you? Yeah, I've got a, um, I've got actually, I've, I'm not sure if I've got, I do have a website. The website is, should be in the back of the book. Yes, my website's in the back of the book. It has a contact email in there as well. I do have, I think I'm not sure if I have some cards as well, which might be downstairs with some bookmarks, which I can put put on there as well. So you're welcome to take it with us. Um, I don't know how much of the, the book is the... I think it's yeah. twelve ninety nine, I believe, right now. Cool. With a free copy of the magazine. Yeah. Great. Right. Thank Good. you. Good. Thank you. Thank you.